Hi everyone, this is Erica from Gokche Capital. Today is episode 16 of our Gokche Investor Series. And today is the second part in our mini-series on learnings from the book Sell Like Crazy. So as a quick recap from the last episode, we went over three of the first key items that we learned from the book. And this included a little bit about time allocation, which went into the 80-20 rule. I think many of you are familiar with and how ultimately about 4% of the activities you engage in produce about 64% of your revenue. And all of these high benefit activities fall under the bucket of sales and marketing. We also talked about building a buyer profile and then developing high value content offer. Broadly speaking, you give before you ask. Um, So as I mentioned very quickly, this is part of our mini series where we discuss some of our favorite books and the things that we learned from them. We do believe that it's always important to be learning, especially from those who are smarter than you. And we would like to share some of what we've learned from the experts um, who have written some of the books that we are reading. And as I said before, today we are wrapping up our learnings from the book Sell Like Crazy by Sabri Subi. So going into the next couple learnings, the first was, or the next learning and the first in this presentation is a discussion on how to craft a great opt-in page. And just to give an example first, uh, an opt-in page is often the pop-up. So if you go to a website, you'll sometimes see a pop-up. It'll have a blurb and an image, and then it'll ask you to submit your email. And that's really what we're talking about when we're talking about an opt-in page. It's a way to collect emails from potential leads. And these are usually leads who are not yet looking at your website or specifically looking for your product. So some strategies for creating a really successful opt-in page, according to the book, include having a catchy headline, but most importantly, highlighting your high value content offer. And again, if you didn't see our previous presentation, a high value content offer is something that you are giving to your leads that offers real value to them. So you wanna highlight this offer and also include a visual of it. And then also have some compelling bullets about your offer but also potentially about your product and how it would benefit the buyer. And then last, you have your email capture section. So some food for thought. I'm not sure how many land investors are currently using opt-in pages. If you're not, it may be worthwhile thinking about it and where you could implement it. If you already are, this may be some ideas to ponder. The book then goes into a pretty detailed section on designing a website and using your website to implement what is called in the book, the Godfather strategy. I'm not going to go into as much detail as the book did, but at a very high level, the feature of a good website according to Sabri, are the following. So you create a feature list and a benefit list 
and in these lists you're also highlighting a problem that you're solving and then explaining how you provide the solution. You also then, again, as you do almost everywhere, according to this book, uh, you also highlight your high value offer and you provide some kind of guarantee. And this can take a number of different forms and there are some examples in the book as well, but something that gives you credibility, whether that's a 30 day money back guarantee, whether that's testimonials or credentials or some other creative kind of guarantee that you're providing to show that you are legitimate and that you stand behind your product and what you're selling. And then finally, again, you collect information like emails from leads. And as I mentioned, this section in the book is pretty long and pretty extensive. So I'll just highlight a few other bullet points on website ad advice. They, they fall under two big categories. Again, the overarching theme in the book is give before you take. So you want to make an offer and back up your promises. Another key theme is to highlight the problems, the real problems that your potential buyers are facing, focus on them and show how you're providing the solution. And then also you want to make yourself cred credible. So show your credentials, provide a guarantee, offer social proof like testimonials. That's just a brief overview of the section on websites in the book. There's a lot more, but uh, just wanted to highlight the key takeaways. Um, if, if any of this sounds interesting, you may want to check out the book yourself. The next pointer was on Google and Facebook ads. And quickly, I'll say when we're talking about specifically Facebook ads. These are not ads like Facebook, Facebook marketplace ads where you're listing a particular product. These are the, the paid ads that show up on the side or in the ad section. And you, you pay a particular amount for each person who clicks on them. So they're, they're the more generic ads. Although I suppose you could use them to list a particular property as well. But he gave some high level advice on generating more economic Google and Facebook ads. The big takeaway here is you first need to understand your cost per lead. At the end of the day, you want to make sure that you're paying as little as possible per click on the ads. So if your cost per click is very high, that's a sign that your ad is not working and you really need to rethink it. So that's the first step. Then he also gives a few tips on how to improve the ad. The first again is a great headline. And as with the overarching theme of the book, the point here is that you're not trying to sell immediately, but first you're trying to offer value in a very eye-catching way. The other key piece of advice he has is really, it's broken down into two pieces, but it's really one piece of advice. And that is you want your ad to look like normal content. So you want images that look like they would show up in a normal Facebook feed and you want the copy of your ad to sound like normal feed news. So again, the theme here is you don't want to scream that you're selling something. You want the content to be compelling on its own and you don't want to be pushing the sale at this point. So our key takeaways from this section, and again, I'm only giving a brief overview of his main points, but most important piece of advice here is to keep track of your 
performance. You want to make sure that if you are running Google and Facebook ads, not everyone is, but if you are, that they are actually performing and they're worth their cost. If they aren't, you want to keep playing around with it until your cost per click is, is at a reasonable number. And the last point is be creative. Try to think outside the box with your copy and above all else, don't just try to sell. Okay, and then this leads into the next point, which is two sections, both under the overarching theme of interacting with your leads and your buyers. So the first part is on speaking, the second part on writing to your leads. So when you're speaking with your leads or buyers, Subray's so main point again was do not start with the sell. Again, overarching theme of the book, but start with the buyer's problem. Try to understand what it is they're actually looking for. And when you've diagnosed their main issues, take a moment to really think about whether what you're selling can help them or what you're selling is really what they are looking for. Sabri seems to suggest that if you cannot solve their problem, you shouldn't try to sell to them. You should be clear about that. But if you think that you can solve their problem, or if we want to be specific about land, you do think that you have a, p a property that really meets their criteria, then make the offer. But the point is to start with the buyer's problem, let the buyer speak, and be honest about whether what you're selling will actually meet their criteria which all falls under the main theme of deliver value and don't rush to sell. Then the next section was on writing to your buyers. And his main point here is when it comes to marketing, email outperforms every other marketing channel out there. His belief is it's better than Google ads, Facebook ads, or any other place you may be posting your product. So our key takeaways from this, and I think a lot of people are saying this, so it's good to have it reiterated, but it highlights the critical importance of a buyer's list. As I said, I think almost anyone in the land investing space will say this as well, but it's really important to build a buyer's list from day one and to nurture that list. So that includes sending regular emails to your buyer's list and also making sure that when you're talking or speaking with your potential buyers, you are creating that relationship with them, building trust and delivering good customer service. And he gave some tips on how to deliver good emails to your buyers. His first tip is to Take some time to make sure that the email platform you're using actually delivers your emails. And this is targeted at anyone who uses a service like MailChimp to deliver their bulk emails. And what he's saying is pick one of these platforms that delivers email campaigns. Um, pick one that actually gets your emails into someone's inbox because there are many of them that won't actually do that apparently. The next tip he has is to check your email address and make sure that it has a high sender score and he gives you places where you can go to check this. His point here being that even if you have a high performing platform, if your email address has a low sender score, it's likely just going to go to spam and no one will open it. So even though an email campaign is the most effective marketing tool, if no one is actually getting your emails, it's doing nothing for you. That's his point in the, the first two bullets here. Then when it comes to actually writing emails, his first point is, as with the Google and Facebook ads, you do not want your email to look like advertising copy. So avoid logos, avoid fancy images, stick to plain and simple text. And in that same vein, Write like a friend and not like a company. 
So start a conversation with your buyers. Try to make them like family. And as with everything he discusses in the book, deliver value first and give before you ask. So our final takeaways from this book included the key point that we saw highlighted again and again in all of his tips, which is deliver value before selling. Another key takeaway we had is when you are developing a relationship with your buyers, make sure you speak and write to your audience like a regular person. Don't try to push the sale. If it's not going to work, it's not going to work. It's better to have a good relationship. And the final point is really um, just keep experimenting. There's always room to improve your ads, your posting, and your website. So if you think something's underperforming, try a, diff- a couple different things. See if, if you can improve. So that wraps up Sell Like Crazy. In the next episode, we'll go over another book that we recently read and which we thought was useful to our land business. And then of course, as always, if you are not familiar with us, please visit our website. We are Gokche Capital and our website's gokchecapital.com. And at our main webpage, you can learn a little bit about our promotions, which include free land giveaway, free vacation giveaway, and free swag giveaway. And now for a limited time, we are also offering a free 15 minute consultation call. So if that interests you, just send us an email to schedule. Our email is info at gokchecapital.com. And then also feel free to reach out if you have any questions or leave a comment on any of our Gokche Investor Series videos, and we will get to your question in the next episode. So thank you for listening and more to come.